to leave different than what we've come yes, in, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Father God, this is the midweek, Father God, and we need to be filled up with more of your spirit. Submerge us, Father God, in your spirit, oh, today, Master. We need another touch, oh God. Yes, Jesus. And Master, we know that we are on one accord and one mind. Father God, you are there in the midst. Yes, so Holy Jesus. Ghost, we ask that you have your way in this yes, place. Yes, we invite you into this place. We lose, Father God, every chain, yes. everything that has had us bound, Father God, break it off of us, Master, that we will walk out of here empowered, yes. walk out of here encouraged, Lord God, walk out of here like we're free, because yes. you said who you have set free, Father God, is free, free indeed, indeed, Master. Free indeed. Give us the mindset of that we are free and we are never going back. We love you, God. We give you all glory, Master. We give you all honor and we give you all praise, Lord. And it's in Jesus, Master's name, that we will always pray in the church cell. Amen. 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 Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody glad to be here today? Yes. Anybody Hallelujah. glad to be here this evening? Yes. Amongst his people. Yes. Amongst those who praise him. Amongst those who worship him. Hallelujah. Because it is his people that is the church. It is not this building. It is not this property. But it's the people of God people. that is the oh, sanctuary. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad to be worshiping in amongst his people. Come on, let's praise the Lord today. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, if y'all able, come on, let's praise him together. Hallelujah. Hey. Uh -huh. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living. Sanctuary for oh, 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 you, Lord, prepare me Lord, prepare to be a sanctuary, be a sanctuary. Pure, and pure and holy, wide and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a sanctuary for you. Sanctuary, here and holy now, right and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. What you ask me to do, I will say, sanctuary.
Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare to be a sanctuary. Be a sanctuary. Pure and holy for Pure you. Pure and holy. and true. Tried and true. And with thanksgiving. And with thanksgiving. I'll be a living. I'll be a living. Sanctuary. Sanctuary. For you. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. If you are, you know that you are the sanctuary. Hallelujah. You are tried. You are true. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the say say hallelujah. Let the say say hallelujah. Let the redeem say hallelujah. If you believe that you got better days coming, come on, make some noise right here. Just give him some praise right there. Just take 10 seconds. Come on, before the music, if you know that better days are coming, or as Deshaun would say, man, Sister Deshaun would say, better days are here, we give you some praise right there. Amen? Hallelujah. Right.
with your help and know that your help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give us some praise if you really believe that. Better days are here. Not just coming. They're here. We're walking in it. I can sit you down and testify. This thing is real. Hallelujah. Welcome to Boot Camp Bible Study. Welcome. Amen. 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 Where well, your pastor is Pastor Moo. Praise Hallelujah. God for Pastor Moo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome all of our visitors. Amen. We praise God for you. And, and to our virtual family, we also welcome you to the house of the Lord. It is a custom here to say our mission statement. Amen. 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 You can look to the screens and read and recite it. It says, Basic ministry exists as a church of the 21st century to help, heal, empower, lead, and prosper God's people and their community in order to bring glory to our Father, which is in heaven. Why does basic exist? To help. Amen. To help God's people. Hallelujah. Next. Amen. Well, God is a precious spirit, and where does he dwell? In us. In us. So take your precious self and hug your brother and sister. Amen. 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 everybody in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. For this is the day that he has made, and we are glad and rejoicing in it. Amen. Ooh, I'm still in a meeting mode. It's hot in here now. Amen. It's warm. It's, it's good. Amen. We're going to get ready for our announcements. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, amen, to all our virtual family. Amen. All right, let's get ready for our basic news. Amen. What's going on? Amen. I just want to say, uh, as we prepare uh, to go into our basic news, everything we talk about here is on our website. Amen. So if there's anything that you need to or you forget, you can go to our website, www.jointhemovementtha. Dot com, amen. And you can see it, amen. A scripture a day will keep the devil away, amen. That is just not a good cliche. That is the truth, amen. Uh, we're coming out of First Corinthians, First Chronicles, amen. Nineteen through twenty-four. Of course, I'm battling this week, and we're going through nineteen through twenty-four for our Bible battle, amen. Amen. Keep reading the Bible. 
course, as we're preaching, brothers and sisters, as any teaching goes on, amen, make sure that you limit your walking. That is a time to learn. That is a time, amen, amen, to break open your word, amen, amen. So don't be distracted when the word is going forth, amen, amen. Let's keep going. Of course, we have a charging station, amen, in the lobby, amen. So if you need to charge your devices, we know some of you got your Bibles, on your phone amen this is the new generation amen we can accommodate you amen so you don't have to charge up in here but you can charge right in the lobby amen first fruits every morning brothers and sisters monday through friday thank god for deacon stallings let's give a round of applause amen for deacon stallings every monday through friday our intercessory prayer team is going forth amen Amen. That's one of the reasons why God is blessing this church the way he is. Amen. And he has favor on us. Amen. Because every morning, amen, God's people are going before his throne talking to him. Amen. Amen. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Amen. And so if you want to start your morning off right, amen, tap into our Zoom link. Amen. Start off with prayer. Amen. Amen. I do it every morning. I do on my way to work. Amen. As I'm riding from Antioch to Richmond, California, I be in the, I be praying with them. Amen. And it really does set my mind to go into the job. Amen. I go in prayerful. Amen. That it really sets my dip my disposition, my attitude. Amen. That I've been in front of the Lord before I start trying to deal. Amen. With the duties of life. Amen. Amen. Let's keep going. Hallelujah. We are fed so far a total of 5,047 families. That's good. That's good news. In a time of recession, amen, in a time, amen, of decline, amen, God is still using us to be a blessing, amen. The Bible says, amen, in a time of famine, the righteous prosper, amen. Amen. And God prospers us so that we will make sure his people prosper. If you're not doing nothing on Wednesdays between 2 to 5, you need to come here and work for the Lord. Amen. See Minister Alex. Amen. And get start serving. Amen. Start serving. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. Amen. I, I, told, I told somebody this morning, I told one of our sisters, I said, if you stop getting up, amen. One day you won't be able to get up. <laughs> amen. So don't sleep too long. Amen. Amen. You're training your body to lay down. <laughs> All right, y'all listen to me. Your muscles are stiff enough. One day you, you stop walking. One day you ain't going to be able to walk. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. So you want to stay busy. You want to stay doing something. You want to stay getting up. Amen. Training that body. No. You got to get on up. Amen. Amen. Basic training, amen, is available online, but uh, Lady Muyi will start hers. We said we're going to start in a, in January, first Wednesday of January, amen. We got so much going on this week, and there will be times, amen, we won't have Wednesday, uh, amen, because we're going to be doing things on that Saturday and so forth, amen. So we just decided to start our new session first Wednesday of January, amen, our basic training. Amen. Sign up to serve. Amen. I was just, we were just learning as leaders. Amen. If you want to be greatest in the kingdom of God, you got to be a servant of all. Amen. You got to be a servant. Amen. God will not relinquish power. Amen. To people that are not serving and serving consistently. Amen. The first way, brothers and sisters, to your destiny is that you serve. Amen. You serve something and you do it consistently. You do it good, brothers and sisters. Amen. That's how you, that's how God promotes you. That's how God, amen, calls you up. Amen. He says, you got to be faithful over a few things, and then I'm going to make you ruler over many. Amen. A boss will not promote an employee that is not consistent. Amen. And doing something. Amen. And so find something to do. Are y'all listening to me? Find, no, listen to me, listen to me, listen. Find something to do in the house of the Lord and do it consistently. 
Are y'all listening to me? Don't do it once a month. Don't do do it consistently. Right? And then God will promote you. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? What what got me promoted to being a pastor, amen, is that I served a pastor consistently. Every Sunday, two services. Before he got there, I was there. When he left, I shut the door. Are y'all listening to me? That, that, that's how I got here. I wouldn't have never even knew how to do this if I wouldn't have served him. Are, are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? I didn't do it when I felt like it. I did it all the time. That's, that's what made God trust me with you. Because if I wasn't consistent there, I wouldn't be consistent here. Uh, does that make sense? All right. Amen. So you got to serve. You got to serve. God ain't just going to put you up. Amen. If you ain't showed yourself approved. Amen. Amen. Trap ministries, brothers and sisters. Amen. Of course, every first and third Sunday. Amen. And this third Sunday, we will be doing our toy giveaway. So we're going to need everybody to come on out. Amen. 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 Oh, this, uh, we got a great week this weekend, too. We were just talking about that. Amen. This weekend, we have our grant writing course. Amen. From actually 10 to about 2. Amen. This Saturday. Amen. If you want to learn how to write grants, amen, we have somebody coming in. Amen. Through the leadership of Sister Shar. Amen. And Brother Dre, they're going to come in and teach us how to write grants. Amen. Teach us how to go get some finances for our businesses. Amen. Amen. You should want to be here. Amen. If, if this if this is what you want to do, you should be here. Amen. You got to learn. Amen. A amen. Amen. So that'll be from 10 to 2. We are asking a donation. Amen. Of $50. Amen. But if you don't have it, still come. Amen. Breakfast will be served. But if you can give a donation of something, amen, that will be appreciated. Amen. Amen. Do you know that there was a man, I can't think of his name, but he was a very wealthy, wealthy man. Amen. And he said, I'm going to let somebody have lunch with me and I'm going to talk to them. Amen. And he did a bidding. Do you know the person that won that bidding paid $17 million to sit and have lunch with a man just to hear him talk to him? That's a true, that's a true story. Amen. And we like, but do you know by that man talking to them, it's gonna change that person's life? See, he he knew this 17 million, he, this, this knowledge I have is worth way more than 17 million dollars. Are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? Amen. So that gentleman was that gentleman was he found it valuable. To pay that much just to get that work, just to get that wisdom. Amen. Because wisdom is priceless. Knowledge is priceless because once you got it, can't nobody take it away from you. Are y'all today? He knew I'm going to give you something that you could pass down your kids, kids, kids. Amen. Amen. So don't, don't look at learning as, uh, as unimportant. Learning is the most important thing you can do. Amen. Getting to know something is the most important thing you can do. I know how to write grants. I don't know all of it, but I'm going to be there because I'm sure that's something I can learn. But I have wrote big grants. Right? Amen. And trust me, if you ain't been taught, you don't know that. Because <laughs> I had to get taught how to write it. Amen. And I'm still trying to, amen, learn and learn and learn. But once you got it, can't nobody take it away from you. Amen? So don't be afraid to invest in knowledge. That's why I said all that to say. Right? Don't, don't be afraid to invest in knowledge. Amen? Also, amen, that Sunday, amen, I'm going I'm to, Saturday, forgive me, I'm going to be there. Then I'm going to dip out, amen, and go shoot a music video. Amen, in Sacramento. Amen, like you. Amen. Amen. See, I'm, I'm going to do some running. Amen, but. It's the life he chose, amen. Amen. I'll let y'all hear it real quick, amen. I don't think I let nobody even heard that song. Amen. Turn it on. Amen.
Amen. We just we just doing what God called us to do. Amen. God opened up. I got we got some videos. You know I wanted to do, but this is the one that opened up for me. So I said, sometimes you got to know how to follow the cloud. <laughs> Amen. Oh, you can it's got a nice. Come on, everybody, let's all get down and just clap your hands to this funky sound. The priest in the booth with simply drink, so you know we gon' lift him up today. I'm tired of being me, living my life like a creep. Pull up in my Jeep, I make my chopper go yeah. yeah. Post it on the corner, chilling with the villains. Turn it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You see, I can't help myself. I'm bad for my health, about to kill myself. myself. I'm fed up with myself, and I'm asking, can you save me, Lord? Like you, walk in, talk and do what you do. Washed in your blood, till I'm a see through. Live life closer, just like a Hebrew. Join to the hip, till they think what's up, I mean. Let your word be in me, just like an IV. I did the call like I stole your ID. Can't tell the difference if it's you or if it's me. So that's what we shooting a video, amen, too. Amen. <laughs> you know, you know, some of the candy you hold. <laughs> Can't show them everything, amen. <laughs> but we're going to be shooting a video of this. Uh, because for the new year, God showed me this even with this song. I'm going to drop the video on New Year's Eve, I mean New Year's. Because it's a new year and we need a new you. That's what God is calling me. He said, I want, you, I want a new you. Amen. I said, well, what is a new you? I want you to be like me. Amen. So that's my new year resolution. Amen. 2023, I'm going to try to be like God. Amen. I'm going to try to be like Jesus in every way of my life. That is my new year resolution. Amen. I'm going to try to be like God. And I'm going to be talking about that. Amen. Amen. So that's, that's it. Amen. I just gave you all a tip. Also, after we leave, we come from our grant writing. I do that world changer. Amen. Our world changers ministry, teen and young adult ministry is, amen, throwing a game night. This It's going to be off the hook, y'all. They're playing it. They got some great games, amen. We're going to have the popcorn machine popping and the cotton candy machine going through and food, amen. But we're going to have a lot of games against male and female, amen. We're gonna, I'm going to need some brothers to pull up these seats, amen. So we're going to have all this whole front open so we can have some fun. How many know you can have fun being a child of God, too? It's not all about being boring and somber. And serious looking. You know, sometimes people think mean looking is spiritual. <laughs> I know it ain't. <laughs> a smile is more spiritual. Amen. Because the joy of the joy is a, a fruit of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So we want to make you laugh and have some fun and play some games. Amen. Wake your youth up. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Come with your competitiveness. Amen. But we're going to have a ball. Amen. Amen. Also, that Sunday, amen. Ooh, nine in the morning, we will be. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> Did I say that on the camera? Excuse me. Amen. Ooh. Nine, I'm ready, though. Nine in the morning, we'll be at the Bay Area Rescue Mission. Amen. We're doing two services this Sunday. Amen. So I'm definitely going to need the praise team to come with me. Amen. Amen. You guys got to suffer with me. Nah. <laughs> Amen. You been called to ministry? Come on now, nah, play. <laughs> Nine in the morning, <laughs> we're going to be at the Barrier Rescue Mission. Amen. Amen. And we're going to, amen, lift up the Lord there as well. Amen. Let's keep going. And then we're coming back here. And this, we will be baptizing. Amen. I know we have anywhere this Sunday. Amen. So if you do want to get baptized, see Sister Shar. Amen. 
Amen. We have how many? We have two so far. Amen. Going in the water. Amen. I thank the Lord that every month he's allowing us to baptize. Y'all see that? Amen. That's a blessing. Amen. That God's allowing us to bring new converts into the body of Christ. Hey, that's a, that's a blessing. Amen. It really is. Amen. Please forgive me for this Tuesday, y'all. We will get back on our cross carriers. Amen. It was scheduled this Tuesday. I knew it. Amen. Amen. But I worked so long. I was in so many meetings. Amen. I was on my way home that, that Tuesday. And I said, Lord, ain't no way in the world I can teach a class right now, Lord. Amen. I'm just being truthful. Amen. You got to know I'm a human. Amen. Amen. I, I rolled home. Amen. I got right in that bed. Amen. <laughs> I think we had, we ate. I stopped by and got me some of that food we ate and I went to sleep. Amen. Amen. That's why I feel good this morning, today. Amen. But we will resume back. I did give everybody the test. So if you do have your test, turn it in to me today, though. Amen. All right. Well, turn it in to me next week, this Sunday. Amen. Uh, next Saturday, Season of Drip Winter Fashion Show. Amen. Amen. In collaboration, Filthy Rags, in collaboration with We Eat Together Apparel. Amen. And Cold World Clothing. Amen. We are coming together. Amen. As brothers. Amen. And hosting a fashion show. We all have a clothing line. Amen. And we're just coming together to support one another. Amen. And also, amen, this is, this is uh, really helping us plow the ground for our second campus as well. Amen. 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 Moving into that city. Amen. Using brothers in that city. Amen. Joining forces. Amen. And we're going to have our fashion show on Thursday. On Thursday, if you want to be a model, we need you here next Thursday. Amen. Because we're gonna we're gonna be doing some uh, just teaching about walking the carpet and everything. Amen. For the fashion show. Amen. But come out and support. Amen. Come out and support. Amen. The flyers are out digitally, but I will get some pressed up. Yes, man. But it has been being shared on social platforms. Uh, if, if, we, if you can, take the flyer, share it in your community as well amongst your uh, contacts. Amen? No, next Thursday, the 15th. The 15th. So the workshop is the 15th at uh, about 7 o'clock. So at the same time, kind of around praise team rehearsal, we're going to figure all that out. Amen. Uh, and I'm, I am going to need help, too. So for those that want to model... And for those that want to help us put this on, definitely, sis, amen. I know I thought about you when we were doing it, amen. Amen. So I want to show you the ins and outs to all of it, amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. This is our fashion, amen. So we're going to have majority of all these hoodies in, amen. I mean, just representing God, y'all. Just using all we can to lift up the name of the Lord. And, and one good thing is, amen, people been buying this stuff online, Amen. So that's good. Amen. We shipping them out. Amen. Amen. So God, to God be the glory, y'all. Amen. It's amazing. Amen. God, just give you a thought. Amen. It started with one. Amen. That's the wrong fly. We're actually doing it on December the 18th. Our toy giveaway will be December the 18th. Amen. We're going to start setting up at 10 a.m. in the park. We're still going to start around 11. It's going to take us about an hour or so to set up. We're going to have food, uh, amen. We're going to have, of course, gospel presentation, music, and so forth, amen. And we're going to start about the same time, about 11, 11.30, amen. And after our gospel presentation, then we'll start giving out the toys. We will need a setup crew, amen. We will need uh, to get people now who's going to be at the food booth and what toy booths they're going to be at, who's going to be at the, uh, of course, contact table and all of that stuff. So we're going to start starting to sign up for booths this Sunday to make sure we have enough help. Amen. Because right now we've been having a ton of signups on our, our website. I mean, we're definitely well over 100 children right now for sure. Just every day I'm getting a phone call. I don't know who website we on. <laughs> I told you now, now, I don't know who website we are, but this stuff is, <laughs> every day I'm getting phone calls about this thing, amen. And so, it, so people are going to our website, signing up. We have it where they can sign their kids up on our website. I got the right date on the website, definitely, amen. Um, 
But one thing we will do, we'll be contacting all of them back. Amen. Let them know they be approved. Amen. And so we're going to need help just to control the crowd and love on the crowd, right? It's going to be beautiful uh, Saturday or Sunday morning. You know, we're going to have some hot apple cider out there and cocoa and all that. Amen. It's going to be beautiful. Christmas. Christmas. Amen. In the cup. Amen. Amen. And then on Christmas Day, that's wrong. That should be December 20th. They should switch the dates. Amen. On Christmas Day, we're going to do our secret giver. Amen. Are we ready for that today or are you going to do it on Sunday? Okay, so we'll just do it on Sunday. Amen. We're going to exchange names. And we're just asking for everybody just to get a gift of minimum of $10. Amen. And we're going to, we're going to give to each other. Amen. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to make all the ladies pick ladies, all the men pick men. And then we're going to give to one another. Amen. We give a lot to the community. Amen. Which is amazing. But I want to make sure also we're giving to each other too. Amen. We're showing that love and kindness to one another. And you just being loving on everybody outside your house. You don't love on the people that's in your house. Hello. All right. <laughs> Amen. And then on New Year's Eve, amen, we're having my Bible and my boombox, Holy Ghost house party, amen. We're going, it's going to be good, amen. Of course, PLA is going to be in the building. We're going to have some more brothers and sisters in the building. It's going to go up, amen. It's going to go up. And we got some people coming all the way from Sacramento that's going to be with us on New Year's Eve, Amen. So we're going to worship the Lord. And afterwards, of course, y'all know we have some good chicken and waffles. And amen. And then amen. That's how it's no, no better way than to bring in the new year, praising the Lord. Amen. Yeah. We're starting at 9 p.m. And we're going all the way to 2023. Good God Almighty. Whoa. We were just coming in to 22. Y'all, I can remember that like yesterday. Man, I still look at the pictures. I'm all like, and here we are again. That happens so fast. Amen. But that's what we're doing. Amen. Amen. I think that is our announcements. No, let's keep going. We already did that. Thank God for our, 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 our mission trip. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to pass it over for our Bible in the air. All right, we're doing Bible drill. I think we're going to save lyric, uh, our lyric game for game night. All right, so get your swords, get your swords, get your swords. Your real swords, not your digital ones. <laughs> Should I? Look. <laughs> A real sword. All right. Somebody please find for me. Hebrews 4, 16. Hebrews 4, 16. Remember, there is a theme, so pay attention to the scriptures. Amen, sis. Please tell me you got it. <laughs> uh-huh. Amen. That's the word. Lioness one, get him up. Get him up, get him up. Can somebody please find Micah, Micah, six and eight. Micah, six and eight. You're not playing? Okay. Better for us. Micah, six and eight. You're the creepy, you can say I got the most high. Jay? <laughs> you flip it. Ain't nobody got it. Uh, why you didn't say man, Kanika? Okay. Amen. 
Get him out. First Chronicles 16 and 34. First Chronicles 16 34. Ladies. Amen. Amen. Your Bible read different. It's a word in there. Numbers. Numbers. 14 and 18. Numbers. 14 and 18. Numbers. Ah, uh -uh, she was. Though it was about mercy, but it looked like the man had no mercy. <laughs> Good job, brothers. Amen. Amen. You, you keep studying, sisters. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. I love the way we compete. Amen. About the Bible. I love it. Amen. If there's one thing we should compete and be challenged about is studying the word. Amen. That's a good that's a good competition. Amen. Who can know the most scriptures? Amen. Amen. We're going back to the gospel according to St. Matthew, brothers and sisters, chapter 18. Amen. Uh, we left off at 21. Amen. Just a couple of uh, Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 18, verse 21. Amen. As you get turned there, amen, I would ask you, how many Gospels are there? Four. four. Amen. Name them for me. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Amen. If I ask you, what are the synoptic Gospels? What would you tell me? Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Amen. John is not a synoptic. Amen. Amen. You, you were right. I know what you were getting at. I know what you were getting at. Amen. Amen. You had it right. You were just, it's just how the question was phrased. Amen. Amen. Why is John not a synoptic gospel? Uh, amen. He was trying to prove to his readers that Jesus was God in the flesh. Majority, or let me say the the other three gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, they were they were they were proving that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, Amen, and so forth, Amen. But he wanted to prove not only was he the Christ and the Messiah, Amen. This was God, Elohim, El Shaddai, in the flesh, Amen. And so that's why we don't label. Uh, the gospel of John as a synoptic gospel. Amen. If I told you God was all omnipotent, what would you tell me? Omnipotent. I'm going to wait till we get on one accord. Omnipotent. All powerful. If I told you he is omniscient, what would you tell me? All knowing. If I told you he was omnipresent, He's everywhere at the same time. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew name means what? He's a gift of God. Matthew's secular job was what? Tax collector. Tax collector. All right. Amen. Let's get into the gospel according to St. Matthew uh, chapter 18, verses 21. Amen. Let's go. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Amen. Peter asked a question. Amen. They're, they're learning. They're learning. They're disciples, right? They're disciples. Amen. Amen. And one thing a disciple is, is a learner and a follower. Amen. That is the definition for a disciple, a learner and a follower. Just to say, uh, God did not call us per se to be church members. Amen. God called us to be disciples. Amen. Learners and followers of Jesus Christ. Learning. Amen. Then putting into practice what you learned. Amen. What good is it to learn something that you don't do? Are y'all listening to me, brothers and sisters? But we learn to do. One of the reasons that you're here learning the word. Amen. Is so that you can actually do the word. Right? This, the, this word is supposed to be lived out. Amen. This is a living word. Amen. James said, don't be a hewer, hearer of the word and not a doer of the word for you're only deceiving yourself. Amen. Amen. So you are learning to do. Amen. The book of Daniel says, those that know the Lord shall be strong and do great exploits amen one of the one of the uh, uh uh the keys are the source to our doing amen and the power and the miracle working and all that you see in the bible is that you have the knowledge does that make sense brothers and sisters knowledge makes you equipped to doing so don't run out trying to do something that you don't know uh i'm gonna say that again don't run out trying to do something that you don't know. Amen. If you feel like God is calling you to do something, the first step you're supposed to take is let me understand what you're asking for me to do. Does that make sense? Let me study who already did it. Amen. Let me read books about it. Amen. That that is the first step, brothers and sisters, of you actually doing is that you're going to make yourself aware of what? So before the apostles could be delegated the responsibility, amen, of the kingdom of God to build the church, amen, because what Jesus called the apostles to do was to build the church. We walk in the doctrine of the apostles, amen. Jesus discipled them, the apostles discipled the church. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? So before he could send them out on his behalf as his ambassadors, he taught them for three long years in Jesus' university. Oh, are y'all listening to me? Three long years. They had to be with him, had to live. They had to hear his teaching. They had to ask questions, amen, because he's, he he's going to leave and go do something else. But I'm going to need what I started to keep going, so let me very make you very knowledgeable. One way you become knowledgeable is you got to ask questions. If It's not a problem if you don't know something. The problem is if you act like you don't know it. I mean, you act like you do know it, but you really don't know it because you feel like there's something wrong with asking a question on how you do it. So the only dumb question asked Acts is one not asked. Right? That's the only dumb question. Peter asked a question. How many times we should forgive? <laughs> right? Because I, I have people that have offended me. I have people that have come against me. He didn't say how many times we should forgive our enemies. He said, how many should I forgive my brother? Right? Because even those that are close to you will offend you. Right? The Bible says offensive come often. In a sinful world, you will be often offended. 
That's why you got to have tough skin in this world. Amen? Because somebody always going to say something about you. Somebody always going to cut you off while you're driving. Are y'all like that? You're in a sinful world. Amen? Don't be shocked when, when wrong happened in a sinful world. That's like you going in a bar and you shocked that somebody drunk. You, you in the bar. <laughs> that's, that's what they do. Amen? In, in a world full of sinners, sinners sin. You shocked that sinners sin, but they sinners. That's crazy. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. And so he says, how many times should I forgive? Now, I thought about this because this whole teaching series started from somebody, two brothers asked the question, who want to be the greatest in the kingdom of God? That's what 18 started off. Now, from that, you got this whole thing. We went from that to forgiveness. But I thought about children. And one thing children are able to do easier than adults is forgive. We, we can be in a fight today when we was kids. I mean, brawling and tomorrow be playing with each other. It's only when we become adults, for some reason, we hold stuff against each other. Uh, children don't do that. You can whoop your child, and, and I would let them say, oh, da, 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 da. They'll be come hugging you. For some reason, children have the potency to throw stuff off of us. No, no wonder God said, unless you be like a child, you can't enter into the kingdom of God because children know how to forgive. Only when we become adults, we get bitter. Are, are y'all listening to me? We hold stuff against one. I, mean, I don't know why as you get older, we get meaner. Maybe it is because we get more sinful. Maybe it's the older we get before we came to Christ, maybe the more wicked we got. And a part of wickedness is unforgiveness. I don't know why children do that. But I thought to myself, the older you get technically, when you think about even weight and about being healthy, the older you get, the lighter you're supposed to be. And I thought that even in life. Don't grow old and get heavy. And, and, I'm, and, I'm, talking about, and I'm not even talking about with physical. I'm talking about with the weight of the world, meanness, bitterness, unforgiveness. Don't angry. It will put you in the grave faster. But the older you get, the lighter you're supposed to get. Because you should know more wisdom. Yeah. You should know more about life now. You should, the older you get, the more you should be able to throw stuff off you. Because you know that don't mean nothing anyway. Right? And, and that's what I wrote in my Bible. The older you get, the lighter you should get. So the longer you can live. The older you get, the lighter you get. The, le the less people you should try to carry, the older you get. After all, I ain't carrying no grown, grown kids. I ain't doing it after a while. The older I get, the lighter I'm going to get. If you ain't learned by now, go figure it out, baby. Are, are you, I got to get, yeah, the older you get, the lighter you got to get, at least, at least the weight of the world. Now, when you're younger, you can do certain stuff. You can hold certain stuff. You can bear certain stuff. But the older you get, the lighter you got to get. I could deal with you living with me now. I don't know if I can do it when I'm 70. <laughs> I ain't going to do it. I ain't, well, I'm not going to let nobody stress me out to the grave. I've watched elderly get stressed out by them kids and die. I'm doing that. Because mm -mm. the older we get, the lighter we should get. Right? And that's even in the physical. Yeah. Technically, the older you get, the more weight you should lose. Amen? Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. She said, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I, I'm sorry, Mother Mary. I didn't mean to put the damper on you like that. 
<laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> that was funny. But, but, but Jesus said, not only he said, should we forgive him seven times? Seven is the number of completion, right? He said, we should do it seven times. He said, but think about that. Peter said, I'm going to forgive a brother seven times. That's good. Some people wouldn't say one time, two times. He said, well, I'm, I got seven for you. <laughs> Jesus said 70 times seven. That's a lot. I, I probably stopped counting after 100. He said in a day. Right? Well, well, listen, 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 listen. You will fail to miss salvation holding on to unforgiveness. You will not get into heaven. Because how can you ask for something that you ain't going to willing to give? Because the only way you're getting into heaven is because God forgave us for our sins. Right? So how can you ask God to forgive you of your sins and you won't forgive somebody else of there. Did you hear how Jesus told us to pray? Forgive us as we forgive. You ask God to measure your forgiveness. So if you don't forgive, God is not going to forgive. Forgive us as we forgive those that trespass. One of the reasons that I can I can forgive people, because I've been forgiven. Are you listening to me? The right, that's what makes me easy to forgive and let stuff go, because I watched how God let stuff go against me. Right? Because all have seen. Right? Ain't nobody perfect. So if you can forgive, if you can ask the God for forgive you, how you can't forgive your brother or your sister? You're asking for something that you're not willing to give. And God doesn't do that. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that will he also reap. Amen. This, that's why the Bible says you cannot take holy communion with unforgiveness in your heart. At least you fall sick or at least you die. Because how can you take of the blood by which you've been forgiven by with a hard heart? See, when we, when we eat of the body and we drink of the blood, that's all about forgiveness. That's about Jesus dying. That's why I say you better examine yourself. Come on, preacher. You better examine yourself. Examine your heart. Because, because you can't ask God to have a soft heart and you got a hard heart. Are y'all listening to me? So, so before I drink of this, before I drink of this cup, I gotta say, Lord, let me let that go. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let me love them, Lord. Come on, Lord. Amen. Because because I'm drinking something that represents forgiveness. Right? So he said, don't play with this. This will kill you. Because this is all about forgiveness. God says he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation means how can we bring this back together? I know it's messed up. I, I know they messed up. I know they talked against you. I know they hurt your feelings. And I know they broke your heart. But how can you bring it back together? Good God Almighty. Are y'all listening to me? I know what they did. I know it. I know it. I know it. But, but can you see yourself and their fault? What role did you play? You can't dare think in some way, in some type of situation, you didn't play no role. Even if you were the one that let them in, did you ask God before you let them in? See, there's some role you played in that. 
Even if I hired the person and they messed up the company, I hired them. So you got to have some fault in this. In every situation, you got some fault in it. Even if you were the victim, why did you go down there? <laughs> uh, does that make sense? If you fail to find where you messed up, you'll never get the situation corrected. Every leader, when something happens, you have to find out. I always say to myself, Mustafa, what did you go wrong? Because so, even though they did it, I made it, but there's somewhere in here, I went wrong. Does that make sense? And you never can correct it if you don't take responsibility for it. As long as you say it's her fault, it's his fault, it's they fault, you give them the power to correct it. But when you start saying it's my fault, that means now I have the power to change it. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. No, it's my fault. Yes. I, you know what? I take responsibility for this. Yes. I got it. Because once I start saying that, that means I'm about to change this. But long as this, that wasn't, if my mama was like this and my daddy was like, oh, that, that ain't going to never change. No. Because you're giving them all the power. When you say, no, it's my life. Do you understand? I'm coming to you, Mother Mary. Do you understand you did not pick who was going to be your mama? Amen. Ooh, come on now. Come on now. You did not pick who was going to be your daddy. Hey. You did not pick the gender you was going to be. You did not chick pick the ethnicity you was going to be. All, you had no choice in none of that. But there's one thing. You did not have choice in how it began. But there's one thing you do have a choice in. How you going to end. I don't care if you was born a molestation, if you went through all type, if you was born in foster care, you had no choice over that. But just because you was born in that situation don't mean you got to die in it. Are, are y'all listening to me? I didn't choose none of that. But I'm, but I'm not going to let my beginning, amen, dict dictate how I'm going to end. Uh, are y'all... Why let somebody that hurts you, amen, mess up your life? Uh, are y'all listening to me? Amen. You have something to say. We're going to keep going. I wanted to say that, you know, unforgiveness is like a door that you can't get out of. Amen. It is. And you're holding all this weight and yes. scorn. Yes. Unforgiveness is scorn. Yes. Yes. You know how the Bible says, do not sit in the seat of the scorn. Yes. Right. Unforgiveness is like yucky scorn. Mm -hmm. Just angry. It's just, it's just angry. You're just mad. I can tell when somebody, I'm coming to you, Sister Sharp. I can tell when people post stuff and they say stuff about this, say stuff about church, say stuff about, I'm like, you, you, I, I can really tell you're just mad. Somebody yes. hurt you. Yes. And you ain't forgave them. Mm -hmm. You're just angry. You're just angry. And you're now you're just lashing out at everybody. But everybody didn't do it. And you can't move forward. You cannot be creative with unforgiveness. It literally stagnates you. And because you got to be light to be creative. That's what I'm saying.
Amen. That's what he's reading. Yeah. I said, don't tell nobody else. Get a mediator. Amen. Of how to how to deal with matters. Amen. 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 Let's let I want to go on a little bit longer. Then we then I'll let y'all hold your write your questions down. Write them down because I don't want you to forget them. Amen. But baby, look, come on. Amen. Let's go back to 23. Write them down, though, because I, I don't want you to forget them. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain... He, he said, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. Go ahead. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and that payment be made. Now, now notice he wants to settle accounts. Amen. The kingdom, we're bringing everything back to the uh, square one. Right? The kingdom of God is true. Right? It's, it's flat. Right? It's foundation. Right? Somebody owed something. He said, well, let's sell them. That lets us know debt. That will affect your children. Right? That, have, you, have you ever married? Right? If, when you marry that person, whatever their debt is, guess what? That's your debt. Right? That affects your kids and your wife and everybody else. He owed, but now everybody got to get sold because he owed. <laughs> right? And wealth does the same thing. Amen. Go ahead. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and his children and all that he had, that payment to be made. The so, servant so the problem, I'm sorry, babe. The problem was he owed, right, and didn't have the money to pay. Right? He owed. So somewhere in this was bad stewardship. It, it doesn't tell us that he was a bad steward, but we understand he's a bad steward. Because anytime you got a bill and you can't pay it, you're not being somewhere you're not being accountable. It's not, it's nothing wrong with having bills and being able to pay them. Right? Money is to pay bills. Money is to pay for the lifestyle you want to live. And if you don't like PGE, don't pay it. Simple. It's, it's just, that's what it's for. You can't eat money. You can't wear money, right? You buy, you use money to pay for the way you want to live. So you got to, you always got to take a right look at your money, right? Don't, when it's time to pay your rent or your money, oh, oh, I got to pay that bill. You don't, you want to be homeless? I, I, so that's a blessing when every time you got the money, you can pay, hey, hey. That's a, you see, I'm trying to change the way your perception. People look at bills as an ugly thing. Bills is not an ugly thing. Bills is to pay for the lifestyle you want to live. Because that's what money is really for. Right? But Hold on, hold on. But, 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 for, but for some re here, somewhere here, this man forgot about his needs. And he started using his money for his wants. And when it was time to pay a debt, he didn't have no more. 
My grandma always said, don't spend everything. And, and just, just food for thought. Christmas is coming up. Don't spend all your money in December. Because January is going to be a long month. <laughs> are, are you listening to me? Just, just food for thought. Always put something up. Always put some. Even when we, even when I cook Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner for all my people, I, I cooked a whole lot, but I put me a couple of oxtails up. I'm, I'm just letting you know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't spend everything because I got, I have to think about tomorrow, right? Somewhere this man wasn't thinking about tomorrow, and all of a sudden the king wants his money. He don't have it. Kingdom come. We could sell everything. Right? Because I want my money. Go ahead. I want a payment. Go ahead. The servant before fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Th that will make you beg. <clears throat> I I'm just pointing out to it. This, that's not the whole picture of this story. I'm just giving you that will make you a beggar. It made this man have to get on his knees and plead that the king wouldn't sell his kids. Go ahead. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him and forgave him the debt. But He released him and forgave him in the debt. He didn't even say you got to pay me. He let him go and said, don't even worry about it because he moved on his soft heart. <laughs> That's why when I want to do something to somebody, I don't, I don't even want to hear him repent. <laughs> don't move on. No, no, don't start moving on my soft heart. Right? But that lets us know he was a good king because he had a heart. Right? He wasn't a wicked king. Right? Because he actually had a heart. God cannot put you in leadership if you don't have a heart. Because people going to mess up. And, and if they cry out to you and that don't move your heart, you can't lead God's people. Because God got a heart. Right? It's scary to put a per person in position of power with no heart. That's scary. That you don't have no remorse, no compassion, no love, and yet you over all these people. Oh, God. That's how you get wicked kings. And dictate. Just kill everybody. You're going to kill everybody? So this, then we understand this was a, this was a good king. Because the man cried out. The king said, you know what? Not only am I going to let you go and not let your kids go and everybody else go, I'm going to cancel your debt. Don't even worry about it. Right? Are you big enough? I'm just throwing out a little thing that we can learn about. Are you big enough to let it go? Are you big enough to let it go? So you got to get the last word. So you got to be seen. Big people can let it go. King got a lot of stuff to do. I can't do this. I know I can do this to you. But what do I benefit from doing this? I want my money. I don't want your kids. That, that's what banks say. Banks don't like to take your house. Y'all understand that. Banks are not in the business of real estate. They're in the business of money. They tell you, I don't want child. I want my money. Right? But, 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 but big people, what makes them big and what makes God enlarge their kingdom is the size of their heart. Right? Big-hearted people have big kingdoms. I'm going to say that again. Big-hearted people have big kingdoms. The bigger your heart for people, the bigger God will build your kingdom. If you're a little-hearted person, 
you're going to have a little kingdom. Let me, let, me, let me compare your kingdom to your life. Little hearted people have little lives because their heart is not big enough to let everybody in. Big hearted people know everybody because their heart is big. Right? Your, your ministry, your life will grow the size of your heart. Oh. Does that make sense, brother? He was big enough to let it go. You know what? I'm going to forgive you and let you go. I'm not going to even say you owe me next month. Let's set up a payment plan. Don't even trip off of it. Did, that, did y'all see that? Let's keep going. But the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him. But now him. the servant went out. Go ahead. <laughs> if you don't stop... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. You're but, on tape. You can't do that. Oh, no, go ahead. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. Mm-hmm. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. So the servant went out, did the same thing as the king. Right? To his fellow servant. I said, now you pay me what you owe. And then the servant did the same thing he did. Fell out. Man, please forgive me. I'm going to pay you. And look what, look what the servant said. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. And he would not. He received something that he would not. One, I want to point out, that's the reason he's the servant and not the king. His heart. That's the reason. Did you see the? Did you see why the king is the king, and why the servant is the servant? Because it's their hearts. Ah. Uh, did you see that? How the Bible made sure that you knew he was a king and he was a servant. And do you see their actions? I can't put him over the people. Look at him. I can put him over. Look at him. He, he begged for mercy and wouldn't give it. How can God put somebody to follow that? Because the leader we were just learning is the first example of what it's supposed to look like to lead. You're leading them away. That's bad leadership. He should have followed the leadership of his king. But he went contrary to the king. The king just showed you mercy. And you're not even on his level. He's a king. You're a servant. And you could even do that to people on your same level. And look what the king did when he found out about it. So when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And the master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. Did, did he, not only did he sell him, he delivered him to the torture, torturing men. That's like hell. Right? That's God. Well, this is a picture of God and us. God is the king. We are the servants. God says, if y'all can't forgive each other, and you're begging me to forgive you, and I'm forgiving you all the hell you kept up, and now you go to your own brother and your own sister, you can't say, I'm going to torture you when it's over. 
Because you, because you are a wicked man or a wicked woman because you won't give what you asking for. And that's wickedness. It's wicked to want love and don't give love. It's wicked to want help and you won't give help. That's wicked. To want something is that you won't give back. It's wicked to live in a house that you won't help keep clean. That's wicked. That's wicked hearted. Right? To ask for something that you won't ask back. He did. He said, man, I'm going to torture you. That's what he, that's what he did. And, and, that, and that's what God looks at when we don't forgive each other. That's how he looks at us. That's how the, you can't be a follower of Christ. Because one of the fruits of the Spirit is love. So you can't have the Holy Ghost. If somebody begging you and that don't move you, you, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is going to move your heart. Are, are, are you listening to me? Hey, ain't no way. When Gina was telling that story about her sister, that I almost dropped. I said, Lord, I must. I know I'm getting older. It was making me tear up. Because there's no way you can see somebody else uh, remorseful and crying. It don't move your heart. Because one of the fruit, the Bible says you're going to know them by my fruit. It wasn't talking about your good and bad. Because sometimes you got good people that do bad things. And you got bad people that do good things. So it ain't talking about that. It's talking about the fruits of the Holy Ghost. You're going to know my people by the fruits. The love, the patience, the joy. the pe no, it's, 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 Those are the fruits that you have been born again. I posted something. You cannot be born of the Holy Ghost unforgiving, mean, hateful. No, you ain't got it. Can't, you can't. You can't. You can't. God is love. How, how are you born in the image of God and you ain't got love in you? You don't have empathy, compassion for you. Something is wrong. <laughs> because the first thing God will make you is lovers of people. You'll cry over somebody else's problem. That's right. When you got God in your heart. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. 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 Gave us two commandments. Love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right. How can you love, how can you want forgiveness and don't give it? Does that make, see, one thing about God, I noticed, the, one thing I've learned about God. God will always make you look at you. All the time. One thing I've learned about God, you cannot be really walking with God looking at everybody else's flaws and mistakes. And, and, and there don't see yours. I'm, I'm just going to be truthful. Amen? One thing you're going to know about, like Jesus said, how can you point out the stick in my eye and you got a Beam in your eye. <laughs> I, I just look at me. I, I don't. I don't look at everybody. Else. I don't. Look, you know, cause one, I don't. I don't. I pray for everybody, but I don't look at everybody. I don't look for everybody's mistakes and flaws. I, I'm trying to master my own. I'm trying to get over my own thing. Are, are, are y'all listening to me? I'm trying to correct my own. It takes enough energy in me to correct myself. Keep myself in line. My grandma used to say it this way. If somebody comes telling you about everything somebody else doing, they ain't doing nothing. That's what you to tell her. She said, watch that person. Uh, right? Because, because God is always, when you're holding something against somebody else, God will say, what about you? What, what if I treated you that way? But if I talk to you, see, God, he, I mean, I know that's how he deals with me, yeah. right? He makes me merciful. God makes you, God makes you merciful, right? He's a God that's rich in mercy and grace. 
right? Nobody in here is perfect. Nobody in here deserves God. You all do understand that, right? Nobody in here deserves this stuff we got. If God gave us what we deserve, we'll all be in hell. Y'all do understand that. Sin bringing forth death. Right? We'll all be messed up. Oh, everybody. With our titles and our anointed selves. Burning. This, 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 this is, this is all about forgiveness. That's, that's that, what we believe is all about the blood being slain, the lamb being slain. That was all about the day of atonement that the children of Israel will receive forgiveness for their sin. That's what this was all about. Right? So, so how can the forgiven turn up their nose? That's like the poor man now looking down on those that's poor. Ah. That's what that's like. The forgiving is holding grudges. Wow. Oh, God. Are y'all listening to me? The forgiving is holding grudges? The forgiving has unforgiveness in them? That don't even make sense. That mean, that's like the liar getting mad that he was lied to. That doesn't make sense. Do, do you know one of the first scriptures God brought to me that I learned? Ain't no honor in the den of thieves. One of my first scriptures I learned by heart. That there is no honor in a den of thieves. Because I was mad that one of my brothers told on me and got me going to do all this time. And I was so furious with him that I wanted to do something. And God said, Mustafa, how can you think that there will be honor and every day y'all wake up doing wrong? And you think somewhere in every day of y'all wickedness, getting up, conniving, scandalous, how y'all get over, somewhere in his mind, he thinking, right? And I said, you're right, Lord. That makes sense. That was the first scripture he taught me. I said, you're right. He said, how can you ask for truth in a, in a crowd full of liars? How can you ask for righteousness in a crowd full of murderers and thieves? He said, you was one of them. I said, hold on. I said, you're right. You're right. And, I, and I had to look at myself. And you know one thing I said to myself? If it probably was on the other foot, I probably would have did it too. Have, have you ever, and I'm almost done, but have you ever thought when you were the person doing wrong, and you had a bunch of money, you said, why well, I didn't do this when I had that money, when you got right? You ever thought that? Like, like, like when, when, when you finally got right, you had some good thoughts, you said, I should have did this, this, and this. But you know why you didn't think like that when you were doing wrong? Because your mind was in a pattern of thinking wrong. You, can, you, you, you can't get sweet and bitter from the same fountain. I know I was going to say, why I didn't do this when I had to? Because your mind wasn't thinking on that way. Right? Oh, you, you were thinking wrong, and when you got it, you did wrong, because it's all wrong. Now that you're right, you're thinking right. But you can't think wrong or right at the same time. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? And, and, and so that's 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 why we don't do it. But if, but if you know you have been forgiven, and you know you walk in forgiveness, and you know it's by grace of God that you're here, 
And it's by the grace of God that you're alive. And it's by the grace of God that your sins didn't overtake you. And it's by the grace of God. It's by the grace of God. It's by the grace of God. When somebody needs some grace of God, how you can't give it? When you walk in his grace all the time. You're living in his grace. Right? So the more you understand or the more you celebrate God for how he has forgiven you, the easier it is to forgive other people. It's really just that simple. But if you almost start thinking somehow by your works that God owes you something, that's why you can't be forgiven. That's why you can't give it. God don't owe nobody nothing. At least you put him in debt. And you, can't, oh. and you can't put the king in debt. So, so if every day you knew you woke up by God's grace, you would have a different disposition toward each other. Does that make sense, y'all? And so God wants us as a people, I'm done, God wants us as a people to walk in forgiveness. To forgive your brother, love your brother. Not saying that you got to put yourself in the same position. You're not saying that that's not wise. Right? But you can't hold nothing against nobody. Right? You got to love everybody. You got to do good to try to live peacefully with everybody. Right? Amen? So, and, and so that, 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 that you will receive the same thing. Amen? Amen. Questions or comments? Go ahead. Judge yourself. Ownership. Did I say ownership? That's what another word I heard in my Amen. Spirit. Ownership. You got to be ownership. You know what I'm saying? Because a real person of God takes ownership. A real person of God stands up and say, wait, I messed up. I shouldn't have spent that money. I should have used that for tithes and all. Amen. That's a real person. That's what the Lord is telling you. You see what I'm saying? And then that's when you have a cleaning in the inside. You can take a shower and everything else on the outside, but you can be in the darkness of God and in the, the, the inside because he looked at your heart. He looked at your heart. Amen. So I just want to say, I just That's good. I, I, I want to say this off that. The, the, amen. There was two altars in the tabernacle. Think about that. Altars were stuff die at, right? There was one outside the house then there was one inside the house. The one outside the house, they killed the lambs. Then who did they kill on the other altar? Yourself. And the, that altar symbolized prayer, what you were just saying. The altar of incense. It's prayer where you're supposed to kill yourself. That's where you offer yourself up. The lamb has all been already been slain. That's Jesus. 
That's who brought me into the house. But how I stay in the house is every day they have to light that altar for their own sins. The prayer of incense, the altar of incense, is where you kill your self. So I'm coming to you. So one of the main things you should be asking in prayer is not just give me, give me, give me. It's Lord, take this out of me. Lord, take that out of me. Lord, take that out of me. Lord, take this out of me. Lord, take this out of me. That's really how your prayer is supposed to sound. Make me better, Lord. My temper is short. I'm not loving them right. I got an attitude about this. I got an attitude about that's what, like you said, that's when you get on your and you confess your faults and your to God. Your sins, and He's faithful and just to forgive you. So it's really prayer. Prayer is not just to get cars and houses. Prayer is where you offer yourself up. Amen? Amen. Yes, ma'am. And I'm coming to you, then we go. Man, that's what it's about. Yes, ma'am. And God, and God told us, amen, it is a key. And God told us to do it quickly. Don't, don't wait a day. Don't wait two days. Soon when an offense go off you, you better throw that stuff off you real quick. No, notice, notice the first thing Jesus said on the cross. That was the first thing Jesus said. Father, forgive them. He had to say that so he could rise up. I cannot rise up with unforgiveness. So the first thing I'm going to say about these people that's killing me right now is Father forgive them. Amen? Because I got to rise up one day. And if, I, and if I got an ought against them, I'm going to stay in the ground. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory. Let's stand and pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify you for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together in your word. Thank you, Lord, that you're talking to us about forgiveness. Father God, I pray, Lord, that you will examine all of our hearts. All of us have been hurt. All of us have been offended. All of us, somebody has scorned us, did something to us. But Lord, look what we've done to you. So we're praying, Lord, that we forgive them just like you forgave us. We're praying that we will be people of love. We're praying, Lord, that we will be people of compassion. We're praying, Lord, if somebody comes to us and says, I'm sorry, that something in our heart moves, Master. We're praying, Father God, that 
will be light. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that everybody that has sinned against us, that this moment we let it go. We let it go in the name of Jesus. We let it go. You got greater things for us. You got higher height. I, I even pray, Lord, that the blessing you got for us, like you did Joseph, when his brothers thought that he was going to kill him, he said, no, 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 no. What y'all did, it worked out for my good. Y'all didn't know that y'all was doing that, but y'all was being used by God. I pray that we're even able to bless our enemies. In the name of Jesus. We want to be more like you. And this is what you did. At one point, you told us we were your enemies. And you said, while we were your enemies, you was dying for us. Make us more like you every day. Bless your people. Let us walk in this love as we go back to our various destinations. Father God, I thank you for your people. I bless them. Keep us as we travel to our various destinations. Bless this weekend. Let it be a blessing. Let us have fun. Let us learn. Father God, let us continue to advance the kingdom of God. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Give somebody some love. Amen. For God is love. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Yeah. 